Hello everybody, Dick Venn here, part of the Marsbury Abbey community as I'm sure you know. It's lovely to welcome everyone this afternoon and I hope this is going to work. We've never done anything like this before, have we? So this a virtual online service is going to take maybe half an hour, maybe a little longer. We have some special guests lined up for you and I hope we're going to have fun and enjoy ourselves and engage with God in a special way this afternoon even though we can't be together. Would you join with me in a moment in our, uh, as we begin? So I'll say the words in the orange and would we all, let's all say together uh, the yellow words. Jesus, the light of the world is here. Lord Jesus, shine on us. And an opening prayer, perhaps everyone could join in with, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. Together, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. Let's pray. As we gather together, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. As we put aside the things that distract us, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. As we leave behind the things that worry us, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. As we forget about ourselves, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. As we worship you with songs of praise, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. As we listen to stories from your word, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. As we hear your teaching, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. Amen. So we're going to join together and sing our first song, which is In the Name of the Father. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we're gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we're gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering As your saints bow down, as your people sing We will rise with you, lifted on your wings And the world will see that Our God saves Our God saves
After we've sung that lovely song, let's join together in saying a psalm that is a lovely psalm to help us in times of need and trouble. This psalm was written uh, many thousands of years ago uh, when the people of Israel were in deep trouble and they clung on to God. Let's say together, God is our mighty fortress always ready to help in times of trouble and so we won't be afraid let the earth tremble and the mountains tumble into the deepest sea let the ocean roar and foam and its raging waves shake the mountains the lord all-powerful is with us the god of jacob is our fortress our god says calm down and learn that I am God. All nations on earth will honour me. The Lord all-powerful is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. It's a lovely refrain in that psalm, isn't it, that reminds us, and as it reminded the people of Israel, that God all-powerful is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. We're going to have uh, a special guest this afternoon, Pete Campbell, and he sent in a, uh, a video for us to watch. What's the matter, Barney? You're looking very sad today. Why is that? You're feeling a little frightened. And you're worried because you're not going to see your friends. And you're wondering what you're going to do all day at home. Barney, it's very easy to feel frightened. Can I read you a story that I think might help? It's a story about David. And it's called, When My Fears Are Giant-Sized. Let's hope it makes Barney feel better. David took his brothers a lunch of cheese and bread. Soldiers on a battlefield, they needed to be fed. That's when he spied a giant foot and leg and arm and head and heard the giant's challenge and bravely stood and said, God helped me beat a lion. God help me beat a bear, so when my fears are giant-sized, I trust that God is there. 
You cannot fight that giant, his frightened brothers cried. He'll squash you like an insect. He's more than twice your size. You're just a little shepherd boy. You should be terrified. But David knew that God would help. And that's why he replied, God helped me beat a lion. God helped me beat a bear. So when my fears are giant-sized, I trust that God is there. So David went and told the king, I'll take that giant stare, then have my armour, said the king. It's standing over there. When David tried it on, he found it much too hard to wear. A sling and stones is all I need, he said. Well, and a prayer. God helped me beat a lion. God helped me beat a bear. So, when my fears are giant-sized, I trust that God is there. The giant looked at David. He growled and cursed and roared. You send this stick-sized boy against my spear and shield and sword? I'll beat him without trying, then feed him to the birds. But David reached inside the pouch where his five stones were stored. God helped me beat a lion. God helped me beat a bear. And when my fears are giant-sized, I trust that God is there. The giant rushed towards him, his face an angry red. David swung his sling and aimed straight for the giant's head. That small stone struck its target. The giant fell down dead. And as his brothers clapped and cheered, David simply said, God helped me beat a lion. God helped me beat a bear. And when my fears are giant size, I trust that God is there. Barney, did you enjoy that story? And did it make you feel a little bit better? So let's remember that we can trust that God is there, whatever the week ahead brings. Hello folks, my name is Pete Campbell. I'm pleased to be part of the Abbey's 4pm virtual service today on Mothering Sunday. Um, it's a little bit unusual because uh, Mothering Sunday we would always typically expect to uh, do things a little bit differently and often meet with our mums and even visit places as a special treat. And it's a big shame that at this time where um, there's restrictions to movement and socialising, that uh, we can't go to some of the places where we want to go and we can't see some of the people we want to see. I prepared my mum's Happy Mother's Day card. I think I might have to turn it that way for you to see it whilst it's being broadcasted the other way. I've even got a present as well, but uh, unfortunately it might not get to her. It's, a bit, it's, a, it's going to be risky this staying in our house for another 12 weeks. One of the wonderful things about the web is that... Um, it reduces some of the barriers where they used to be. It used to be you could only speak to someone and see them if you went and visited them. But now with the web and some of this virtual technology too, is that we can have conversations and see people and communicate even when we're not present. So even with restrictions, we can still do things. But one of the things I like to think about is that with God, there are no barriers at all. There's no need for technology when we speak to God. There's no need to queue and there's no restrictions either we don't have to wait he won't be overwhelmed he can hear us at any time and at the end of Jesus's ministry right at the end after the death and the resurrection when he was saying goodbye to his disciples the disciples were really fearful about what the future held it was all uncertain and unknown for them they were scared about some of the changes they didn't know when they were going to see Jesus again and they were really concerned. And Jesus said to them two things. He said, care for one another. And he also said, I will always be with you right to the very end of the age. I will never be away from you. Didn't rely on technology, didn't rely on having to see him. He was always gonna be there. And he shares that same promise with us too. So on this special Sunday, 
It's right that we give thanks to God for our mums. It's right that we give thanks to others who care for us. I like it that mums are very good at sharing. And I, I know that she wouldn't be too upset if, uh, if we started sharing these uh, pretty soon in our house. But most of all, what we want to do is thank God that he is always with us. He promises never to be away. And there are no cues, there's no restrictions, and there's no barriers to having a communication and a relationship with God. God bless you as we think about these things and as we enjoy the rest of our service. Thanks, Pete. And now we're going to sing uh, together an action song. This is one that you probably haven't sung before, but uh, the words I'm going to hope are going to be up next to us and uh, we'll sing along with this song. So uh, let's enjoy um, the song. I'm going to jump up and down. Lots of actions in this song. So let's uh, enjoy ourselves. Stand up and let's get on with it. Okay, just warm up your shoulders a little bit. That's brilliant. A bit of bass guitar, I think. Play along with me. A bit of air guitar. I think we need a bit of acoustic guitar as well. Why don't you play along? Very good. Fantastic. Now we're going to start some jumping up and down. You ready? Just here we go. I'm going to jump up and down, going to spin right around, going to praise your name forever. I'm going to shout out loud, going to deafen the crowd, going to send my praise to heaven. I'm going to jump up and down, going to spin right around, going to praise your name forever. I'm going to shout out loud, going to deafen the crowd, going to send my praise to heaven. OK, let's see you running on the spot. I will run this race and I will never stop. I follow Jesus till the day I drop. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Jerky muscles. When you've got such a lot, when you've got not a lot, what? Be happy. That's great. See, I'm jump. Gonna jump up and down, gonna spin right around, gonna praise your name forever. I'm gonna shout out loud, gonna deafen the crowd, gonna send my praise to heaven. I'm gonna jump up and down, gonna spin right around, gonna praise your name forever. I'm gonna shout out loud, gonna deafen the crowd, gonna send my praise to heaven. Bit of running, you ready? I'll run this race and I will never stop. I'll follow Jesus till the day I drop. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. When you've got such a lot, when you've got not a lot, what? Be happy! Try this. Go one way, and then back the other way. And then try a twist. You didn't go down, half it's coming up again. Especially at my age. Oh, I'll win this race and I will never stop. I follow Jesus till the day I stop. Oh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you've got such a lot, when you've got not a lot, what? Be happy. Be happy. Big finish, play the drums with me. Brilliant. Well done, guys. When's it end? Somewhere, eh? Well done. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it's uh, a great song. We think we used to enjoy singing it a lot. That'll be fine. Well, let's Sorry. <laughs> Things aren't going entirely according to plan. Um, I thought I'd like to talk now um, a little bit about um, how we're all feeling about this whole terrible situation of the coronavirus sweeping the world and the kind of questions that we all have. It, it's um, Somebody said to us the other day, it would be really good to have some kind of 
spiritual reflection on what's going on. Um, and this person had looked and couldn't find anything really. And so I'm hoping to, <laughs> um, to be able to add a little something to that. But what, what I want to say is that it, it's, uh, we, when we're in times of trouble, we just ask questions. We want to know why, don't we? We want to know what's going on. Um, why is this happening? Why is the world in such a mess? And it's, it's such an old question. People have asked it down the centuries, down the millennia. Um, and we try and make sense of the wreckage that, that's around us or the wreckage that the world is in. Uh, why, when the world seems so normal and tranquil for so many of us, has suddenly everything turned upside down? Um, illness strikes us or, or death or, or and particularly just now, people out of work, people panic buying. We're living through extraordinary times. Uh, and it's the old question, isn't it? Is God punishing us? Why is God punishing us? What's going on? Uh, it's as if the Tower of Siloam had fallen across the whole world. Now, um, you might not know what I'm talking about when I say the Tower of Siloam. It's, it's um, recorded in Luke's Gospel, chapter 13, and some people come to Jesus and they say to him, Lord, um, what, what about this problem where Pilate's killed a lot of people and and Jesus says he says to them don't you think um, do you think that they were worse sinners than anyone else because they suffered this way no and then what about those 18 people who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them were they more guilty than the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. So Jesus is faced with the, that old question of why has come again. And it, it's around again now, isn't it? Why? Uh, and they looked, as we do, for someone with answers. They looked to Jesus. Nowadays, we might look to the internet or we might look to our leaders. Um, I think I'd want to say, we still need to look to Jesus. And Jesus beat them to it with his answer. Um, he, he brought up the problem. He brought up the Tower of Siloam. He brought up the, the, the issue. Um, but he knew that there was more. He knew that they'd be asking those questions as we all do. Did they do something extra bad that brought this on themselves? <laughs> uh, you, some of you may remember those old thing, old stories um, as we were children. Um, don't step on a crack in the pavement or the bears will get you. <laughs> Did they step on a crack in the pavement? Did they pull the wings off a fly for fun? Or, or perhaps it's a bit like the, the question um, that was asked of Jesus another time about the man who was born blind. Who sinned? This man or his parents? The family of the world right now is really struggling, isn't it, with the same set of questions, starting with, why? And Jesus answered their question with a question. He said, why do you think, he said, do you think they were worse offenders than all the others? So were they comparing the lives of the tragic to the lives of the tranquil? Were they looking for a reason to explain the accident? without having to do the most difficult thing of all, look in the mirror. And Jesus answers twice, doesn't he? He says, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Jesus didn't explain the why. The tower fell. Coronavirus is here. But Jesus brings it all into focus unless we repent there's no hope repent what does that mean well simply it means turn to god change our mindsets to his way to follow his ways to behave like him see how jesus is behaving so so jesus is saying life can be hopeless things can go terribly wrong and there is hope 
But that hope is found in God. And we need all of us to turn to God. And of course, I imagine everyone watching this this afternoon has already turned to God. But I want to say, let's continue to turn to God. Let's, let's not panic. Let's continue to pray. Let's continue to bring the world, um, the people who are helping those who are ill before God. And our own, of course, our own friends and our families. God is the kind of God who sees all of this and his heart breaks too. It breaks for us because he loves us. Jesus has taken on himself all the ills of the world when he reconciled all things to God on the cross. We read that in Colossians chapter 1. And we know it's true. We know it's true because of the resurrection of Jesus. And I want to say one last thing. God is the one who comes looking for us. Remember that parable that Jesus told of the priceless pearl that a merchant found and sold everything to buy it? One way of understanding that story is that the merchant is God who gives up everything to get that pearl. And seeing the story that way reminds us that we are the pearl of the priceless pearl that God wants each of us, you and I. God wants us. And I want to say hallelujah. Hallelujah that we have a God who loves us, who longs for us, who spends his all on us and promises to walk with us. To walk with us through the dark times. Hallelujah. May God go with you, strengthen you and encourage you. Amen. We're going to sing now another song, faithful one, that reminds us that God looks after us, loves us, and he is the unchanging one who cares for us.
So let's pray. Dear Lord, you are the God of compassion. We pray that you will be close to all who are ill or lonely or afraid. We take a minute to think of those we know. Be close to them at this difficult time. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you for all who work in hospitals or caring for the sick. Please give them strength and courage as they do their work. We pray too for those working to find a vaccine or a cure for this new virus. Give them your wisdom and strength. Amen. Lord, you taught us to love our neighbour and to care for those in need as if we were caring for you. Open our eyes to those in need around us, in our town, and help us to do what we can for our friends and neighbours. Amen. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your wings. In these difficult times, be near to us all. Help us to remember that nothing can separate us from your love. We commit ourselves now to your protection. In Jesus' name. Amen. And here's a lovely, um, it's like a prayer that we were sent this week. A liturgy for hand washing during a pandemic. 
maybe you'd like to copy it out and put it by your sink. I suggest we say it together now. As I wash my hands today, wash my heart from fear, I pray. Wash my mind from needless fret. Wash the world from deadly threat. Wash the needy with your grace. Wash me as I seek your face. Wash me, Jesus, every part. Wash me, body, mind and heart. Amen. Now something from Oliver for us all. Good afternoon and happy Mothering Sunday. Dick Venn has uh, organised this wonderful YouTube video and has asked me to contribute. And I just wanted to do really two things. First is to share with you the verse that I like and always comforts me. Fear not, little flock. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom of heaven. It's in Luke chapter 12, 32. It's, it's a wonderful promise of grace. And the second thing is that it seems at this time that we need hooks to place our lives even with their fears on. And over the years, I have found that old prayer from the Book of Common Prayer, uh, the Even Song, uh, to be something which resonates deep in my heart. You can find it right at the end of the evening service. And it runs like this. I've gone and forgotten it. <laughs> Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and in thy great mercy defend us from all the perils and dangers of this night. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May God be with you and keep you this evening, and always, and all whom you love. Amen. See you tomorrow. Thanks, Oliver. So as we finish our service, just a little more to do. Let's say these words together and then we'll finish with the song Cornerstone. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ. So together we say, let's follow Jesus and walk in his light. Shall we say it again, all together? Let's follow Jesus and walk in his light. God be with you. Amen.
Dressed in his righteousness alone Faultless stand before 